Hello children and welcome back to the chapter the Gupta Empire. Now in the previous part of the chapter we last left off about the administration of the Gupta Empire. Now let's talk about the life in the Gupta age. Now we know a lot about the political, the social and the economic life of the Guptas from the account of Fahin who was a Chinese foreign traveler who visited India during the Gupta age. Now he informs us that the cities were very prosperous and many rich people lived in the cities. He spent nearly 6 years in the Gupta empire and says that during those 6 years there was just peace and prosperity and the entire kingdom the people were very very happy and content with the way things were going. He even states that the Gupta kings were extreme supporters of learning arts and they really encouraged art and literature. Now if we have to talk a little about the economic life of the people during the Gupta age, the Gupta rulers produced the largest number of gold coins that ancient India has seen. And this itself indicates the amount of prosperity that have been there during the Gupta empire. Now the Guptas also traded with the Roman Empire and their trade mainly involved exporting of silk. Now India was very famous for silk so mainly they earned money and revenue by trading silk to the Roman Empire. But unfortunately towards the end of the Gupta period even the trade with Roman Empire had declined because the Romans had learned the art of growing silk from the Chinese. So this was about the economic life of the people. Now let's talk about the social life of the people during the Gupta age. Now during the Gupta's caste system was something that was very prominent. It was extremely complex because there were just too many subcastes that came into existence. Now these subcastes basically existed because of the absorption of foreigners and tribes into the society. So many people started coming into India and settling in India from outside. So that's why this led to the formation of many subcastes. Now when you see this caste system it says that the lowest section of the hindu society were called as the chandalas and they lived outside the city and were regarded as untouchable so the untouchable system came in from the gupta period itself and fahin in his work states that whenever a chandala had to enter the city they struck a piece of wood on their forehead so that the people would avoid touching them or brushing against them because they were untouchables so they had to do this ritual before they enter into the cities now the thing is even women led a pretty restricted life during the gupta era and they did not enjoy economic or social independence they were completely dependent on the male counterparts of their family either their father or their husbands or their sons they had to depend on and they say even the sati system appeared during the gupta time sati system is when a woman has to jump into the funeral pyre when her husband dies so they said that women have no rights to live once their husband dies so along with her husband she also had to jump into the funeral pyre Historians believe that one major reason for the backwardness of women was that they lacked property rights. They had no right over the property. Property would generally pass down to the male members of the family, either the son or the grandson or the great grandson. And the only property that she had was given during marriage either gifts jewelry or garments and these were called as tridana moving on when we look at the religion that existed during the gupta period the main religion was hinduism because the gupta kings patronized hinduism and they worshiped both vishnu as well as shiva and they encouraged hinduism by giving donations to for the construction of temples Now just because we say that they patronized Hinduism doesn't mean they were intolerant they generally believed the policy of religious tolerance towards all other religions the followers of Buddhism and Jainism also were encouraged and they were not harassed 
Now, if you see in the history, the Bhakti movement, which is the selfless devotion to gods and goddesses, also began during the Gupta Empire. We'll move on to art and architecture that flourished during the Gupta Empire. The Gupta Empire is known as the golden age of ancient India. This may not be just in terms of prosperity, but in the field of art, especially literature, Gupta age was definitely a golden age. Both Samudra Gupta as well as Chandra Gupta II were patrons of literature. Samudra Gupta represented on his coins the playing of Veena. So if you can see here, this is Samudra Gupta's time coin and it has playing of Veena depicted in it. When you see Chandra Gupta II, he had Navaratnas in his court. Navaratna means nine gems, which were nine advisors he had in his court, out of which Kalidasa was one of them. So they were nine very talented people. So Kalidasa was considered as one of the Navaratnas. Even architecture flourished during the Gupta time as many temples were built. A few examples are Diogar at Jansi and Bitargaon at Kanpur. So this is Diogar at Jansi and this is Bitargaon at Kanpur. Even beautiful images of Buddha was made at Sarnath and Mathura. One very noted of these was a two meter high bronze Buddha which was discovered and it was said to be from the Gupta time. So this was a two meter bronze Buddha which was discovered and archaeologically it is believed to be from the time of the Guptas. And if you see Ajanta painting is another greatest specimen of Buddhist art that depicts the various life events of Buddha. And if you see they are extremely lively and they are natural and even after 14 centuries their color hasn't faded. So which means that even the amount of paint and the quality of things that they used back then was of the best quality. Now another notable thing is the craftsmen of Gupta period were excellent in bronze and iron craftsmanship. The best example of this is the iron pillar which is found near Qutub Minar and this iron pillar of Qutub Minar never rusts. So this talks about the quality and the excellent craftsmanship that existed back then. Now we'll move on to talk about the literature. Rich literature existed during the Guptas. Excellent poems and dramas were composed in Sanskrit. The world famous Kalidasa adorned the court of Chandragupta II. Children, you must remember this. If they ask in which king's time Kalidasa existed, it was during Chandragupta II's time. And some of his famous works are Meghadutam, Raghuvamsham and Abhijnana Shakuntalam. So these are a few of his famous works. Out of this, Abhijnana Shakuntalam is considered one of the best hundred literary works of the world. It's one of the earliest Indian writings to be translated into a European language, which is a very big deal. Even the Panchatantra, which is the world famous children's storybook written by Vishnu Sharma, was also written during the Gupta period. Now lastly, we'll talk about the science and technology that existed during the Gupta period. There were two very noted mathematicians and astronomers during the Gupta period who were Aryabhata and Varaha Mihira. Now when you see Aryabhata's achievements, he was the one who pronounced that the earth revolves around the sun and the earth moves on its own axis on the basis of his mathematical calculation. Apart from that, he discovered the cause for solar and lunar eclipses. He calculated the position of planets. He knew about decimal system and because of him the concept of zero is known today and this concept of zero is said to be introduced to the world by Aryabhata. And he even wrote a book on mathematics and astronomy which is called as Aryabhatiyam. So these were the achievements of Aryabhata. On the other hand, if you look at the achievements of Varaha Mihira, he was a famous astronomer and wrote the book Brihat Samhita. 
and he stated that the moon revolves around the earth and the earth revolves around the sun so he is the person who actually deduced the exact movements of the planets and due to all of these excellent achievements in the field of art architecture science and mathematics the gupta period is known as the golden age of ancient india so with this we complete this chapter let's do a quick recap of what we did in part 2 So we first spoke about life in the Gupta age then we spoke about economic life we saw how there were so many golden coins and we traded silk with the Roman empire we spoke about the social life of people during the Gupta age then we spoke about religion and how Gupta kings patronized hinduism we spoke about art and architecture we spoke about the various achievements in the field of art and architecture with the ajanta paintings the bronze statue the different temple architectures and the iron pillar we spoke about literature that existed during the gupta age we spoke about the famous kalidasa and his famous writings and finally we spoke about science and technology and the contribution of two significant people like aryabhata and varaha mihira with this we wrap the chapter up if you have any doubts at all please get back to us thank you